everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm gonna be doing my feel they look a hot mess now they're grown out i'm missing a few of my rhinestones on both hands and as you can see i've already fouled some of that gel polish off when i was working and they just literally look a hot mess and as you guys know whenever my nails start growing underneath like this they just look so freaking nasty to me so I think I'm going to be cutting them down and then doing a new set um, after that. Um, I know a lot of people ask me, like, how long should you wait before you do a new set? And it all depends on your client or yourself. I personally, again, do not like my real nails underneath because they just look nasty to me. So that's usually why I do a new set. Not because they're lifting or anything, because they're not. So just because I don't like that new growth. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start removing the bling. So for that, I'm going to be using a pair of nippers. And these I just get from like Dollar Tree. And they work really good for just removing all of this bling. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with a coarse drill bit, or actually this is an extra coarse drill bit, and this is by Pana, as you can see there, and I get this one, I think it's from Amazon or eBay, but it's really good, and I just got an extra coarse just because it's quicker um, whenever you're removing the gel polish, so I do recommend this one. So I'm going to go ahead and just start removing the gel polish, and then I'm going to determine if I want to cut them down or not. And then also I'm going to go ahead and turn my dust collector on. Um, but as always, whenever you're removing gel polish, you literally just start around the cuticle area first. Making sure that you get that off really good. And then just work your way around the entire nail. And when I'm doing this, I do speed up my drill a lot. Just so I can get it done faster. And it's really not that much work. Again, you literally just file all of the nail and just getting rid of all of the gel polish. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my dust collector on and I will be back. Okay, so I went ahead and removed the gel polish from these two fingers, and I think that I am gonna go ahead and just cut them down. Um, and I'm gonna go pretty short, so I think I'm just gonna cut off all the way up to my natural nail, which is right there. So they're not like super short, but they're also not as long as I had them. So as you can see, I cut them like right at my natural nail. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of them. You do wanna make sure that if your client wants a cut down that you go ahead and cut them down before you remove all of the gel polish because that's just gonna save you time. You don't have to remove the gel polish that's on the tip if that makes sense. So again, cut them down before you start removing the gel polish. So I cut them down to that length. Again, they're not super short, but they're also not as long. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the gel polish now.
So I've finished this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same one on this hand. As always, I, with this one, instead of filing like around, I kind of just file downwards towards the tip, and then I still go around the cuticle area, but since this is my left hand doing the work, I'm having to be a lot more careful because of course I am right-handed. So again, just file from the cuticle down towards the tip, to remove the gel polish and then just really carefully going around that cuticle area to remove that part. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and push my cuticles and for that I'm using my Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick Disposable Nail File and it's a 100 grit edger. And really these are used to like um, basically rough off the nail, the natural nail, but I just use it as a cuticle pusher and the reason why I like it is because the little tabs are disposable so you can just replace them after each client. Okay, and after that, I'm gonna go in with my sanding band. And as you guys know, I replace my sanding bands after each client. So I go ahead and leave the old one on, remove it, and then replace it with a new one. And for this one, whenever I'm removing the shine from the natural nail, this is how fast it was going when I was removing the gel polish. So then for removing the shine, I literally put it at the slowest speed and we're just filing that natural nail. And remember when we're doing this, we're only filing to remove the shine. We're not filing to thin the nail down or anything. Literally just removing the shine from the natural nail. And remember this step is really, really important because if you skip this step, as soon as you apply that acrylic, your nails will start lifting because basically our body produces a lot of oils and a lot of those oils on, are on our nails. That way, whenever we don't have anything on our natural nails, they're shiny. That's because of those oils. So if you were to apply acrylic over that shiny layer, it's going to lift. Also make sure that you get on the sides really good. So if you need to turn your finger to the sides, that's fine. Just making sure you file really, really good to prevent from having any lifting. Same thing on the other hand. Again, we're just following around that cuticle area, making sure that we get that really, really good. Alrighty, so I removed the shine from my natural nails. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clean all of this up. As you can see, I had a lot of dust. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that over to the side and then I'm gonna get my acrylic stuff out. Y'all, I am literally so freaking mad. I thought I pressed record, but I didn't. So I went ahead and did this hand and you literally have no idea how upset I am right now. Like I literally just wasted like 30 minutes of my life thinking that I was recording. But basically what I did was I pushed my cuticles back and I did my feel on this hand. Y'all like I'm literally about to cry like that's how upset I am. But um, 
anyways i'm just gonna go ahead and show you again what i did so basically since we're doing a feel i didn't need a lot of product so um as far as my liquid to powder ratio um oh yeah let me go ahead and mention this this is the monomer which is our liquid and this is our polymer which is our powder i know someone in the comments the other day mentioned something about she couldn't watch my videos because um basically she couldn't watch somebody that refers to the monomer as liquid and the polymer as powder so for anyone that didn't know your liquid is called monomer your powder is called polymer so i hope someone learned something today which i'm sure i mentioned this in a lot of my videos before but it's just easier to refer to it as liquid and mono uh, liquid and powder because i'm sure a lot of people out there do but you know how people are but anyways again i did the fill on this one y'all i'm so freaking upset it don't make no sense but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and do my other hand so whenever you're doing your um right hand with your left hand or you know whichever way um you want to make sure you just kind of practice and kind of find what works for you as hold like as far as holding your brush whether it's like this i think this is how i hold it um but a lot of the time my first bead i pick it up with my right hand and i switch my brush over to the left hand so whatever works for you is fine like whatever makes you feel comfortable um and makes it easier for you when you're working but we're gonna go ahead and dip our brush into the liquid and since i want a medium sized bead because again we're only doing a feel so we don't need that much product i'm gonna dip it in wipe it off halfway dip it into my powder and again i do have a video on this so i'll be sure to leave the link in the description we're gonna place that bead closer to the cuticle area making sure that we pat it down into place pushing it up closer to the cuticle area and then just brushing that down towards the tip and i think hold on Okay, I had to add a little bit more liquid because it was a little bit too dry because I'm sitting here talking, but we're just brushing that down towards the tip and I'm going to have to try again because that bead was a little bit too dry, so it's not brushing out as smoothly. So that's one thing that you want to make sure that you are careful with. If you place a bead that's too dry, it's going to be really hard for you to brush it out. It's going to be lumpy, which this one wasn't lumpy, but it was just a bit hard to, you know, smooth it out. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that you get the right consistency when you're working to be able to do good nails. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to go in and dip it in, wiping it off, dipping it into my powder. I'm going to place this one right in the middle just because my tip is still a bit thin. I'm brushing it down towards the tip, making sure that I get it on the sides as well. So be sure to turn your client's nail over to the sides. Wiping the cuticle area, making sure that we have no product on the skin because if not, we will get lifting. And as you can see, like it's like flat right there. So I'm going to go in and just place a bead at the tip. And again, that's because my first bead was a little bit dry so it just created that lump right there okay so i'm gonna move on to the next nail so again dip your brush in wipe it off halfway we're gonna dip it into our powder we're gonna place that bead closer to the cuticle area patting it down towards the cuticle making sure that it's all around our cuticle and then we're brushing down towards the tip making sure that you brush really really gently you don't want to just like brush super hard like that literally like feathering it down and then as you can see starting to run to the cuticle area just a tiny tiny bit so i wipe that off on both sides and then i'm gonna go in and do another bead closer i'm gonna do another bead closer to the tip
Okay, so this nail, as you can see, it's still pretty flat. So I'm gonna go in with just a smaller bead closer to the cuticle area. So it can give us that apex that we want, which that bead was absolutely way too small. Okay, so we have that one done. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. So as you can see, it's pretty much the same process over and over again. We dip our brush in, wipe it off halfway, dip it into our powder, get a nice size bead, placing that one closer to the cuticle area, patting it down as well as pushing it closer to the cuticle area, making sure that we get it all over that cuticle area or around that cuticle area. Brushing it down towards the tip. Okay, so I finished filling in all of my nails. So this is what they look like. Hold on. Right here. So now I'm going to put my brush into this little dappin' dish with acetone. And I'm going to let it sit there for about 10 minutes. You want to make sure that you do that after each client or after every time you use your brush. Because if not, all of that product is going to build in your brush and it's going to ruin it. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my stuff up get that out of the way throwing this away and the paper towels that I use when I'm doing acrylic nails are the Viva paper towels I get them from my local Dollar General but you can pretty much find them anywhere whether it's Walmart Kroger just just about anywhere so I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my filing now so first I'm gonna go ahead and shape them so for that I'm using a 100 100 nail file which looks like this I'm going to go in and I'm still going to try to keep that coffin shape, not as narrow, more like a square, what is it called, square, well, I don't even know, but just like a narrow squared. So remember, 45 degree angle on the sides, and then we're going to do a 90 degree angle at the tip to make sure that we get the nail super straight.
So again, 45 degree angle on the sides. Falling from your, like this is your sidewall. So falling from the sidewall to the tip. So falling at a 45 degree angle. The reason why you wanna fall from right there to the tip is because you don't want the nail to be any wider than your natural nail because if not, it's not gonna look as natural and they're gonna be really thick or wide. So falling at a 45 degree angle. And then if you need to rest your finger on something, that's fine because I know I do. So I'm just placing it on the dust collector and just going back and forth and falling at a 90 degree angle. So I reshaped them so that's the after and this is the before so they look much better. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this hand. So same thing. We're filing at a 45 degree angle and you guys know whenever I'm doing my right hand with my left hand I just hold my file like this. And then instead of moving my file back and forth like this, I just move my finger back and forth or like a combination of both um, and that helps a lot with filing. Okay, so I finished filing all of my nails. So now I'm going to go in with my fine drill bed. Or actually, I'm going to be using this one, which is by McCart. And it is a medium drill bed. The reason why is because I feel like this one is actually a little bit 
less coarse than my gold one this one is new but i still feel like it's too um actually you know what i'm gonna switch it out because i know somebody told me that i could um like let me see she said i could score it against a hand file so hope let's see if that helped so basically what that did it was like making it not as coarse i guess let's see okay so now i'm gonna go in and go around that cuticle area remember this is like one of the most important steps as well making sure that we seal around that cuticle area really really good to prevent any lifting from happening because if we have any little gap between our acrylic and our natural nail we will get lifting And then also making sure that, of course, we file the rest of the nail to make sure that it's all nice and smooth. But most importantly, filing around that cuticle area. Okay. Just like that. So we're going to be doing the same thing on all of them. Again, focusing around that cuticle area first, going from the right side over to the left side, being really careful not to cut yourself or your client, but you wanna make sure you get back there really, really good, again, to seal that cuticle area, that way we don't get any lifting. Okay, so this hand is done. So now I'm gonna go over to the other hand and we're literally doing the same thing. Going around the cuticle area, be sure to be a little bit more careful with this hand because of course you can cut yourself if you're doing your less dom dominant hand.
Okay, so now that I've filed all of my nails, of course that drill bit is still a bit sharp as I did cut myself like three times. Um, but anyways, now I'm gonna go in with my, um, what is this, my buffer, and we're just gonna buff all of the nails to a smooth finish. So we literally just go back and forth until we get a really smooth nail. Okay, so I finished buffing my nails. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go wash them and I will be right back. Alrighty, so I washed my hands. So now I'm really trying to decide what I wanna do because I honestly don't know. And as you can see, yes, I did cut myself in a few little spots and yes, it does hurt, but I'm gonna, I don't know, like I scored the little drill bit and I don't know what else to do because it's pretty um, coarse or pretty sharp. But anyways, honestly, I'm just thinking about doing the bubble bath again. I don't want to do too much because I don't think that I'm going to keep this set on for too long because I'm going to want to go back long pretty soon because that's what always happens. Um, let me see. I don't even know what to do, honestly. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do my bubble bath gel polish again. Um, and I'm only going to be doing it on the middle finger and the pinky and then i'm just gonna leave the other ones like that because they still have a little bit of that glitter on them Okay, so I did one coat of the bubble bath gel polish on my middle finger and my pinky, and now I'm gonna go ahead and cure that or cure that for 30 seconds. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go in and do a second coat of the bubble bath gel polish. I'm gonna go ahead and let that cure for another 30 seconds. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go in and apply some bling and I'm just gonna do some on my ring finger and my thumb. And I'm just gonna do them like around the cuticle area. just like that and then I'm just gonna spray them with the activator to help that glue dry and yes that's burning because I have those cuts on my finger but after that we're gonna go in with the IBD intense seal UV LED lamp I mean UV top coat 
and I'm gonna just apply that on all of the nails Okay, so I did the top coat, so now I'm gonna put this hand in there for 60 seconds. Okay, so this one is cured. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other hand. I'm gonna go ahead and do the bling on this one just because I already have my bling out. So same thing, doing it on the thumb, around the cuticle area, and the ring finger. Again, that was my Mia Secret Gel Resin, and then I was using my wax pencil to pick those rhinestones up. Now I'm gonna go in with my bubble bath, and I'm gonna do that on my ring finger, or sorry, my middle finger and my pinky. Okay, so I did the first coat, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cure them for 30 seconds. Okay, so the first coat is cured, so now I'm gonna go in with a second coat. Alrighty, so we cured the two coats of the bubble bath. So now I'm gonna go in with my top coat again. This is the IBD gel top coat.
Alrighty y'all, so here is the final look. They're nice and short and not too much. Um, again, I probably won't be leaving this set on for too long, which is why I didn't do a lot. Um, but I hope everyone enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at GetNo32. And I'll see you guys next time.